instead of doing, look at this, all three of these integrals, I can say from my graph, because this is actually how I'm making my argument, right? I can say um, from the graph, and obviously um, you need your graph to be decent enough to provide part of your visual argument here. Um, from the graph, using symmetry, I'm going to say this exact statement over here. Um, a2 equals A1 plus A3. So I can use this enormous shortcut to then say, therefore the total area is going to be equal to, uh, and I'm just gonna bring this working out from over here, right? Total area is two lots of A2. So I've just got a single integral that I need to evaluate, and then I will be good to go. So let's, let's do that, right? Here's A2 up here. So let's use this guy, copy that. Actually, I only need this part over here. And I'm gonna say this is equal to two lots of A2, which is this integral in here. Now it's still not easy, but I can definitely work this out and it's gonna be much simpler than working out the entire thing with all three integrals. So two lots of, let's start integrating. What's the function that if I differentiate it, it gives me sine? Think carefully, there's some function, you differentiate some function and it gives you sine. What function is it? Now, you know it's related to the other trig function that's here. If you differentiate cos, do you get sine? The answer is no, you get negative sine. So therefore, what I really want is the opposite of that. I want, oops, let's go back to that mode. I want not the derivative of cos, I want the derivative of negative cos. That'll give me sine, okay? So therefore, negative cos is the primitive function of sine. Got that? Okay, now in the same way, when I think about minus cos, what's the function that if I um, differentiate it gives me minus cos? Well, it's gonna be minus sine, like so. So there is my primitive function, and I'm about to evaluate that from pi on four to five pi on four, okay? Um, I see there's a minus sign twice, so I'm gonna pull that out as a factor. Negative two is what I get a result. Um, and then I've got cos x plus sine x from pi on four to five pi on four, okay? Um, now, in fact, I'm gonna be a bit um, funny and I'm going to rearrange these. I'm gonna, because you can add things in any order that you like, I'm gonna put the sine x first and the cos x second. You'll see why I did that a bit later on. Uh, now I'm ready to evaluate this thing. So minus two hangs out the front. Um, big set of brackets here. We'll evaluate the top boundary and then the bottom one. So sine of five pi on four plus cos of five pi on four. There's my top boundary, and then I'm gonna subtract uh, sine of pi on four plus cos of pi on four. Okay, now at this point, um, you can reach for your calculator to help you with some of this. It will be tricky because there's thirds involved. Um, it's obviously much better if you actually know your exact values and can do this um, you know, in your head or with the aid of some triangles and that kind of thing. Now I happen to know these values pretty well because I've been dealing with these string functions for a long time. So I'm gonna say sine of five pi on four, that's actually negative one on root two. Uh, I'm gonna leave this big bracket here. Um, and cos of five pi on four is also negative one on root two. Now you might've wondered, how did I know so quickly that those two values would be the same? Well. Think for a second, uh, pi on four and five pi on four, which appear as our boundaries here, where did I get those uh, values from again? Like why is five pi on four important to me or why is pi on four important to me? And the answer is, they're not random points, they're points of intersection. They're points where the two graphs, sine and cosine, they coincide with each other. Their function values are the same. So if I've worked out sine of five pi on four, which is down here, then cos of five pi on four is gonna be the same value, the blue and the green graphs overlap. Uh, and the same trick is true, the same thing is true when I'm working out sine of pi on four. So this is gonna be positive one on root two, and cos is also gonna be positive one on root two. Okay, uh, let's tidy this mess up. So what have I got here? Uh, minus sine out the front, uh, that two is in there. And what have I got here? This is negative two on root two, minus, well, two on root two again. Uh, this seems like a good spot to uh, cancel out this negative, so I'm gonna put a two out the front. That leaves me with two on root two, 
plus two on root two. That's a lot of twos. <laughs> what have I got here? Um, two lots of four on root two. So I've got eight on root two. And uh, don't forget, root two um, is actually a factor of the top there, right? Because eight is just um, four times root two times root two. This guy here is two, right? So I can just say, well, if I've got a root two on the bottom there, I'm gonna cancel out one of the root twos on the top and the bottom. And this gives me my area four root two. So I'm done. I'm going to conclude the area, the total area is four root two units squared. That was a lot of work for such a simple answer, but we got there. So, wow, a lot of work was required there because these are functions which are, um, they're, they're harder to deal with, with, with than just straight polynomials. So just like before, um, this is a question which will frequently either have more information given to you, like maybe they'll provide those intercepts for you so you don't have to do that legwork, or working out the intercepts will be a whole other part of the question. And so, you know, you'll get marks for that separately. A lot of marks should be given to this, um, depending on where in the paper that it's found and how much help you get given, okay? So that's how you work out the answer. Get yourself a good sketch. Make sure it's detailed enough that you can draw all over it. Um, identify your integrals, which you can see we did here. And um, please notice that when you um, get your integrals, don't just go straight away to the calculus. Look back at your graph like we did and see if there's any way that you can um, simplify those integrals together. We simplified dramatically. We went from three integrals separately um, to just having a single integral, which even the single integral was a lot of work, right? Can you imagine tripling that work? Uh, and then of course, be careful when you go ahead and integrate, combine everything and conclude carefully. Now, just as a note to finish, I did say, well, like, imagine how complicated it would be if you had to integrate all three of them together, if you didn't, for example, notice that you could do this cool thing with the symmetry of the graphs. Well, let me show you what happens when you do. This is what your working is gonna look like if you go ahead and try and do all three integrals at once. You can see what I've got here is a1 plus a2 plus a3. And I'm just gonna walk you through um, all of the working here and what I've done to simplify it because there's some interesting stuff to notice along the way. So the first thing is, um, what I've got is uh, from a1 to a3, um, I've just written them uh, in exactly the same way from the first line to the second line. No change, but I have changed a2. I've taken out a factor of negative one from here you can see I've popped it out the front there so that I have cos x minus sin x on the inside of the brackets. Um, and I don't know why I did this, but there's some dx's missing. So let's fix that up. I think they must've got deleted when I copied some stuff. So I'm integrating everything with respect to x. Now, I wonder if you noticed why I bothered to take away that factor or factorize um, that negative one out. Why is that useful? Well, I want you to look carefully at what I'm now integrating, right? What I'm integrating in the first instance is cos x minus sine x. In the last instance is also cos x minus sine x. Don't forget, a1 and a3, they're the same, um, you know, top function, take away bottom function. But now that I've taken out this factor of minus one, look what I've got on the inside. It's cos x minus sine x. So I'm integrating the same thing all three times. It's just easier for my brain. It's one less thing to have to think about, um, one less set of negatives to, to get wrong. So once you integrate, you get this next line here, um, which you can see I've broken into uh, the red, the blue and the green sections so that you can follow my next line, okay? Um, here is me evaluating the red integral, top and bottom. Here's me evaluating the blue integral, top and bottom. And then lastly, the green one, I couldn't even fit it all on one line. And then what you'll notice is um, on this line here, I have further divided things up because I noticed that a lot of the terms, because there's so many um, overlapping integrals that have the same um, or have related boundaries, upper and lower boundaries, you can see, for example, this guy here, which I've underlined in purple, this is the top boundary of the red integral which matches the bottom boundary of the blue integral. So you can see those two are going to be like terms. Before I even do any simplification, there's a sine pi on four plus a cos pi on four. And exactly the same thing happens um, here. This is the top 
boundary, the upper boundary of the blue integral, which matches the lower boundary of the green integral. So they match up. Now there's two terms left over which don't seem to match up, but we'll come back to them in a second. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, purple, there's a negative and a negative for the other purple. So therefore you've got, excuse me, two lots of sine pi and four plus cos pi and four. And then when you have a look at the other one that's underlined in orange, you've got minus this uh, term here, this expression, and then you've got minus again, the same expression. So you're subtracting it twice. So you'll get minus two lots of them, which is what you can see on this line here. So two lots of the purple one, take away two lots of the orange one. Now, I've written those, um, you remember I mentioned that these, uh, these terms over here, they don't match up to anything. So I've written them in black over here on the end. But then if you look closely, something sneaky has happened over here on the right hand side of the line. Um, I've done a substitution, what have I done? Well, sine of zero and cos of zero, these two functions sine and cosine, like we saw right at the beginning when we sketched, these are periodic functions. They repeat every 360 degrees, every two pi radians. So therefore sine of zero is the same as sine of two pi. And cos of zero is also the same as cos of two pi. Why would I bother writing it as two pi instead of zero? Like isn't zero simpler? And the answer is, well, now that I've got two pi's here and here, they match up with this other term over here. So there is some cancelling that happens. This minus and this plus are gonna give me zero. Now all I've done for the rest of it is I've simplified out and I've got this term in here. Um, I've, I've evaluated, I should say, sine of pi and four is this, which you should recognize from when we worked it out earlier. Um, and then you go ahead and you get the same answer for root two. So the thing that I wanted to point out to you is if you look closely at, uh, let's highlight it, in light green here. Um, if you look closely at this line, I wonder if you recognize where this has come from. Two lots of one, two lots of the other. This is exactly what we were evaluating when we were doing the question in the first instance. See that? Right there, two lots of this guy, okay? So in other words, Unsurprisingly, we arrived at the same answer, but I had to deal with far less calculus when I was doing it the first way because I had done the simplifying right at the, you know, at the outset rather than here where you end up simplifying, but only after you have to wade through some really thorny territory to get there. So I hope that helps. Um, these questions, you have to be careful and methodical because um, a single error early on will really muck you up later. Uh, on the upside, if you do make an error early on and, and you're in some trouble, um, if you do everything else correctly, you will get marks still. But um, you can see this is designed, this question to simplify out if you do it properly. So um, take great care and uh, make sure you draw a really good sketch that's a decent size so that you can get all the right information out of it.